Guitar practice session 91424. These are basically sloppy practice sessions where I'm just practicing whatever I think I need to practice at any given time, hoping that these practice sessions help me put a schedule together that I can possibly stick to, allowing me to kind of articulate what I am saying so maybe I can learn it better, possibly helping other people that might be doing similar type of things, possibly also providing feedback if anybody sees a better way to learn the things that I'm trying to basically learn here. This is the worksheet that I'm going to be using. The thing I do that might be a little bit different than what other people are doing is I usually try to get everything lined up going the same way. Therefore, my fretboard listed out in Excel is going to have the low string or heavy string, the one closest to the ceiling on top, as though you're looking from behind the guitar. I'll rotate my guitar on the screen so it'll look like I'm left-handed so you can see it going from top to bottom, left to right, as well as you hold your guitar from behind, showing it from top to bottom, left to right, uh, as well. So I'm looking here. This time, I'm basically just going over what my idea is that I'm going to first just do my practice session, and then I'll do a little recap of what I did within the practice session, and that's what I'm doing now, so you get an idea of what I'm working on today. So I'm looking on what I would call position one. You can also call it a G-shaped position if you look at the related uh, major scale and look at the open position. Some people use that when they use a the caged shape position. You can also name this position by the the mode that we are in. In this case, it would be the minor scale, otherwise known as, I would call it, absolute mode number six. I'm numbering the modes as they are related to the major scale because I think that numbering system helps us to do a little bit of math. So I'm going to basically practice that and get that in my mind so that I have an absolute numbering system, noting that the modes diff, you know, will change in relation to what mode we are on. But if we use the key of the Ionian or major scale as mode number one, then we can assign absolute mode numbers which could help to orientate us as we're kind of rotating through the modes, I feel like. And so that's going to be mode number six, which is the uh, Aeolian mode or uh, the minor scale is what we're working on. And that's basically you can another way you can name this shape as basically just the minor scale or mode number six, the, I the Aeolian mode. Because if you start on this note and you played through it, then you'd basically be playing uh, a minor scale. Now the minor scale is, if I, sometimes I feel like I already know the minor scale, so practicing it is not something I need to do, but obviously it's, I think it's just that I know the shape the most and sometimes I actually neglect to go back and really think about the intervals and the shapes in more detail just because I've fingered it uh, more times and I know it you know, by, by fingering it. So, and also the minor scale is going to be really important to compare other modes to because when we look at the minor modes, we often compare them and say what's different between the minor modes and uh, the minor scale. Also, when I'm looking at the minor scale and the relative major, I can not only look at the seven note scale, but also lay on the pentatonic scale on top of it. And so we'll also, I also take a look at the pentatonic scale uh, as well. And then, and then that's basically what I do. And then at the end, I kind of mess around here, just playing in, you know, A minor. I don't think I do anything uh, different uh, than just noodling around in A minor. Now we're just moving on to the Aeolian mode, which is basically going to be the minor scale. I'm going to call it absolute mode number six as I compare the numbering system to our key, which is in essence uh, the major scale. So this is just basically uh, the minor scale. We're gonna be looking at it in position one once again, and we can call position one, I just call it position one generically because a lot of people do because it's right in the middle of the car guitar and it's that kind of rock and roll position. But if you wanna name it after the caged system, we can call it a G-shaped, but you'd have to then determine the major scale we're playing in, which in this case would be, you know, the Iolian scale would be in the key of C. So there's the C. If I was to build my shape around that, I get that kind of open G shape. And there's that G shape. So you could name the shape after that as it's related to the relative major. You might also just call it the minor 
uh, mode shape, minor mode number six shape, or the o number six I Aeolian mode shape, because if we played it right from the top, then we would simply be playing, you know, in the minor mode. Now, we, because we're playing in the minor, when, with the minor and the major, they fit nicely into the pentatonic scale as well. So hopefully I'll go through the same kind of things in the minor, and then we'll look at these shapes again uh, in terms of a pentatonic scale and see how we can kind of map those two on top of uh, each other is going to be the general idea. Obviously, the minor is the, the, the number two biggest mode that we consider other than the Ionian or major scale. And uh, so and it's also the thing that we can compare everything else to. So uh, so the Ionian or major scale, we compare the major modes to them, which uh, would be the Lydian and uh, the Mixolydian, and they all have a major third, which is a defining factor of them. But now we're looking at uh, the minors, and all of the minors we could tie out to or compare to the master minor mode, <laughs> which is going to be the Aeolian or minor scale. So this scale, and and the scale basically, if we look at it by intervals, has everything. It has a perfect first, of course. It's got then. This is the funny one. It has a major second, which you would think would be a minor second, but it's still every most modes have still a major second. But everything else is is how you would think it would be. Instead of a major third, it has a minor third. The perfects stay the same on the major and minor. So we have the perfect fourth, perfect fifth, and then you've got what you would expect, not a major uh, six, but a minor six, not a major seven, but a minor seven. So this would be the one, so we wanna kinda know this one inside out in terms of intervals. And then whenever we get to the other minor modes like the Dorian and the Phrygian, we can basically compare them to the minor, and even the li even uh, the Locrian has that diminished fifth flat five, but it's also got uh, a minor third, so we can still kind of compare that one even possibly more closely to the minor than to the major, although that one's a little bit strange even all the way around. It's a little bit weird all the way around, you know. All right, so that's going to be the idea. So first we can say, okay, well, how do I know I'm in this scale well i could obviously if i name this shape the minor shape then it's natural that i would look for this as my go-to shape uh to be playing the minor scale so that makes sense uh i can also just say okay well uh how i can also see it in shapes so i've been breaking my shapes out more into chunks here you're always going to have this repeating shapes of the what I'm calling the double stop and then like the house or square or box and then the two note per sprint string and then the house or box double stop but it's shifted up because like there's an earthquake or something and it shifted up the bottom bit and then it goes back repeating the top part of this double stop box shape so the minor, and now I'm going to tell my little story here because the story helps me to kind of remember things. So we know that the major lives in the house over here. This is the house of the box. And it's in like the penthouse because the major is like the, the, the major, you know, it's the major area. So it looks, for, in this box, it looks forward to this. This is the ocean. It's got an ocean view over here. And then, and then we saw that it's related uh, mode over here, also uh, a major mode of uh, the Lydian, also has that ocean view going this way. And then, but then the minor, we had the minors over here, this one, which was the Phrygian, is in the back of the house looking the other way, and then Locrian is right behind uh, the major on, the back of the house that's the weird one that's kind of the weird one it's kind of like in the attic up there uh, and people try to just kind of leave it alone because it's a little crazy but sometimes it's sometimes it's good and then the miners do their does it does it, the, the minor scale does its own thing 
it lives over here in the two note per string. Sometimes it kind of moves around a little bit and it's over on top of the Dorian. So the Dorian and the minor are hanging. And then down here, uh, it's in with the just the flat. So instead of having a two story place, it's just got its own place in what I'm calling the meat of the hamburger. So it's on the right side of the meat of the hamburger. And then you will recall that last time, the one major mode that's kind of bluesy, so it's kind of it's kind of cool, and it hangs out with the with the with the minor modes is the uh, mixolydian because it has that because the so the mixolydian also uh, it, with the G hangs out in this in this hamburger shape next to the A over here. So that's kind of that's kind of the story we're developing here. So now we're in the A's, which are not in the box, so they don't start in the box. It doesn't live the starting point. Doesn't live in the box. We're always coming back home outside of the house because it's got its own place over here in the double stop or in the two note per string meat of the hamburger. All right, so that's the story. So then, uh, so then, if we just think through this, I can say, all right, how does this work? We've got then uh, the top bit. This is the top part of the double stop uh, box. Du, du, du. And then we go to the bottom of the double stop box. Du, du, du. And then we go to the two note per string, what I call hamburger, du, du, meat of the hamburger. And there it is. We're at, the, there, we're at one octave of our shape. So that's good. All right. If I looked at the uh, whole steps and half steps, Let's just take a look at that real quick on the minor. And we want to be able to compare these whole steps and half steps to all the other minor modes, which would be the Dorian and the Phrygian. So from the one of the from the one of the minor scale to the two of the minor scale is a whole step. From the two of the minor scale to the three of the minor scale is a half step. So that's where our half step is. And because the half steps are in this box, and I'm starting and I hit the half step at the top of the box, there's only one note in between. So this is one to two, two to three, three to four of the minor scale is a whole step, four to five of the minor scale is, is a whole step, and then five to six is back to the half step. So we only have that one note in between. And then uh, six to, to seven of the minor is a whole step, and then seven to eight is a whole step the minor scale missing that leading tone as the C major has and, and every other major scale except mixolydian basically has. And that's an interesting point to note because that means that if I want to add that in, that leading tone in, then I could, like I can, I can add it as a leading tone, which you can often do, well, like if you played an E up top like this way and I want to lead back in. I can add that gives me a, a feeling of pulling and then you and then you pull it back in so just because it doesn't have the leading tone that's an opportunity for us to throw in a leading tone uh, and just whenever we want to give a little bit of tension right before we go home all right all right so in any case then uh, that's that so now let's go and just count through the intervals so we're going from the one of the minor scale, uh, the second of the minor scale. The second of the minor scale is, uh, we know, a major second. It's the only one that has that major bit, even though it's a minor mode. Uh, uh, most things have a major second, and so except for like the Phrygian. So that's gonna be uh, a two note away major second. The inverse of that would be 12 minus two, which would be a 10 note away minor seven. How can I prove that? Well, if I go to this B and I count up 10, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, we get to the A. So, so going this way from the A to the B, that's a two note away um, major second. If I went from B to A, 10 note away minor seven, remembering that when I go the other way, uh, it's usually the if this is a major the inverse is going to be a minor all right and then I also know that the second of the minor scale because the aeolian uh, is the sixth 
absolute mode number six, if I compare it to the major scale, that means it's actually five notes down from mode one or note one of the major scale. And that means that whatever relative position I'm looking at compared to the mode number six Aeolian or minor scale, I can just add five to it to get to the absolute mode number. So it'd be five, six, seven, and that gives us to the Locrian. So this is number two plus five. That gives us to the to seven. And seven is the absolute number for Locrian mode. Now, again, some people might not agree with my numbering system there, but I think that's quite useful to have an absolute numbering system. So you'd have to explain that to people that you're saying, yeah, this is the absolute number mode system as compared to the key of C major so that I can use a little bit of counting uh, here. So that's uh, mode number seven, Locrian. Okay, okay, uh, let's, go to the, let's go to the next one. So now we're looking at the third of the minor scale. The third of the minor scale we know is, of course, is a minor third, of course. That's three notes away. Three notes away, minor third. And the inverse of that would be 12 minus three, which would be nine, which would be a nine note away, which would be a major six. So once again, I have a minor third. The inverse would be a major uh, nine note away, major six. And uh, uh, I can count the three notes away here. So that makes sense. So if I went this way, A to C, let's get it in our ear. Three note away, minor third. If I went from C to A, the inverse nine note away, major six. If we think about it like in a circle rather than linearly here. Okay, so then we're gonna go, let's go to the next one and say now we're at the, f uh, by the way, the, f the third of the minor scale would just be three, would be three plus five, five, six, seven, eight. There's only seven modes. Eight minus seven is one, which gets us to absolute mode number one, which is of course the Ionian, otherwise known as the major. So that C is the relative major of the minor A. Okay, so let's go to the next one. So now we're saying this one is gonna be uh, the fourth. The fourth of the minor uh, scale is a five note away perfect fourth. It's a five note away perfect fourth. I can see that because there's five notes between two strings. So it's simply five notes away. As I count down, 12 minus five is seven. And therefore the inverse of it is gonna be a seven note away perfect fifth. So if I played this from A to D, you got a five note away perfect fourth. If I played it from D to A, you got a seven note away perfect fifth. The perfects are inverses of each other. You can't have a perfect fourth without a perfect fifth because the perfect, if you're gonna say one's perfect, you gotta say the other's perfect because they're inverted. You know what I mean? That's how, if, you get, if that's the way you're gonna play the game, then you have to take it to its logical conclusion. You can't be just pulling off a perfect fifth without a perfect. Anyways, you can also say that you have uh, the fourth, what's the mode, the fourth of, and uh, the fourth of mode number six, Aeolian or minor scale, is six minus one, five, plus four, four, five, six, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There's only seven in seven modes or notes, seven, eight, nine, that would be two. And that's how you get to absolute mode number two, which is a door. And I think there's a fly, a gnat on my glasses. Get out of here, get out of here. I, okay, so then let's go to the next one. We're gonna say, all right, the fifth. The fifth of the minor scale is a seven note away perfect fifth. I can see that because I can say here, there's five, six, seven. Seven note away uh, perfect fifth. The inverse of that would be 12 minus seven, which would be a five note away perfect fourth. So if I play from A to E here, seven note away perfect fifth. But if I went from E to A, five note away, perfect fourth and we also know that the fifth of the mode number six aeolian otherwise known as the minor scale is six minus one or five that's the distance from 
the, the, the C from the major to the six is five. If you start at one and count the steps from there, it's five plus five uh, is gonna be 10. And then seven minus 10 is three. And that's how we get to absolute mode number three, which is the Phrygian mode, a minor mode with that distinctive flat second. All right. And so then we're gonna go, let's go to the six now. Let's go to the sixth. And so now we're on the sixth. And so that's for the minor scale, the six is gonna be an eight note away, minor six, which makes sense because it's the minor, minor mode here, the minor scale. And how can I count that? Because I can say this is five, ten, this would be five, six, seven, eight, inverse 12 minus 8 8 9 10 11 12 is 4 that would be a four note away major third the minor six has a inverse of a major third therefore of course if i play this get it in our ear here this a to e f eight note away minor six but if i went from the f to the a four note away major third if we think about it like in a circle we also know that the sixth of absolute mode number five aeolian otherwise known as the minor scale is this six minus one or five plus six which is eleven minus the number of modes seven seven eight nine ten eleven is number four and that's why it's number four or the lydian the lydian is a major mode you can see it's living in the house here with the with the box looking forward towards the ocean in the in the house so then we're going to go to the next one and now we're going to be down in the seventh so the seventh down here and the seventh of a uh, uh, minor scale is of course a 10 note away minor seven i can count that out just five ten because there's five notes between each string and I could say, okay, uh, I can also say the inverse would be 12 minus uh, 10, which is two, which would be a two note away major second. So if I go from this A to G, 10 note away minor seven, but if I went from G to A, two note away major second. All right, we also know that the seventh of absolute mode number six aeolian otherwise known as the minor scale is seven uh, is this six minus one or five plus seven seven eight nine ten eleven twelve twelve minus seven seven eight nine ten eleven twelve is five right which is the mixolydian as the mixolydian absolute mode number five mixolydian that's the cool mode with the flat seven that has the bluesy, you can see it's living in its own place next to the minor on the two note per string hamburger. All right, let's go to the next one. And we're back, that brings us back home. Back home, baby. All right, so that is that. Here, I'm gonna practice my joke here. I got, I keep on telling, people keep telling me to let it be. And I'll tell you what, I'm not gonna let it be. Why? why? Because because it keeps stinging me, you know I don't care if I don't care if it is a bee. I'm not just gonna sit here while my face is swelling up, just letting it be. Yeah, I if I'll tell you what if if that bee keeps keeps being around me, it'll it'll be a bee no more. It'll end up being a flat O on the wall. Only thing that bee will be bugging is the wall it's stuck on and looking like an o instead of a instead of a b all right that wasn't that good i need to work on the delivery but i'll practice that so let's go the other way now let's say we're going this way we're going back up so now we're going from this a this is the two note per string hamburger and then i'm going back up here which I'm calling, uh, this is the double stop uh, house. So, doon, doon, and then do do do, and then we go back up to the top 
of what I'm calling a double stop box or double stop house. All right, let's count out the intervals comparing this way. So if I went from this one, which I can call the eight or the one back around to this one, we'd be going behind it, which would be the seventh, which in the minor scale would be a, a seven, a 10 note away minor seven. Now, how can I count that? Because I'm going backwards now. Well, I can see there's three notes in between that if I went from G to A like I normally would, and three notes, I mean, I'm sorry, there's two notes away, and that would be a two note away major second. And the inverse of that would be 12 minus two, which would be a 10 note away minor seven. So if I went the normal way from the G to the A, that would be like a two note away major second. But if I went from A and thought of that as my root, which we are, to G, then that would be a 10 note away minor seven. All right, let's bring it back. Let's bring it back to the six, seven, six. And this is gonna be here. So now the sixth of the minor scale is, is of course an eight note away minor six. How do I know that? Because if I go from the F, it would be five going down one and then uh, four. That would be a four note away major third. 12 minus four is eight, giving us the eight note away minor six. So if I measured from the F, the way we would kind of normally think of it oftentimes, that would be a four note away major third. But if I measure from the A, eight note away minor six, if I go from the bottom. So now let's go back to this one and say, now we're going to this Phrygian, uh, the, this is the fifth uh, here. And the fifth is gonna be uh, because it's it's a minor scale, the fifth of a minor or Aeolian mode is a five note away perfect, I mean a seven note away perfect fifth. How do I know that? Because if I measured from top to bottom, it would actually be five notes away, there's five, and then 12 minus five is seven. So if I went from E to A, top to bottom, that would actually be a five note away perfect fourth. But if I go from the bottom to the top, that's where we get our seven note away perfect fifth because it's inverted it's inverted all right let's go back to the fourth so now we're on the fourth and the fourth of a minor scale is a five note away perfect fourth and i know that because if i count this way it'd be five six seven twelve minus seven is five giving us the five note away perfect fourth so if i play from c to a that would actually be a seven note away perfect fifth, our power chord. But if I play that same thing from the bottom to the top and think of the A as my root, that's gonna be a five note away perfect fourth. Bringing it down to the third, bringing it down, breaking it down, bringing it down to the third. We're measuring to this A, not to that A right now. So we're gonna go boom, the third. Uh, the third is up here. And so now we're gonna say, that that's gonna be a uh, three note away minor third because it's a third. And uh, how could I know that? Because if I count up, it'd be five, 10, nine. So from the C, it would be a nine note away major six. 12 minus nine is a nine to three note away <laughs> minor third. So if I went from the C to the A, that would actually be a nine note away major six. But if I went from the A to the C, three note away minor third, looking there. And then we'll bring it back to the second. So now we're back to the second. We're measuring to this A. And the second of a minor is a two note away major second. How do I know that? Because if I counted uh, this way, uh, it's gonna be five, 10. Uh, and, if, and so 12 minus 10 is two. So if I went from B to A this way, like we normally would see it, that'd be a 10 note away minor seven. But if I went from A to B, two note away major second. And then we're back to uh, the octave, back to A. 
You know, sometimes when we're going the wrong way, what you got to do is you got to flip that go around going back to the OG. You got you got you go on the wrong way, you got to flip the go around back to OG because it's good because because if you really want to go, we need the OG because it's flipped around. If you, if you really if you okay, I got to work on that on that one. That was the, because the go if you flip it reverse it, it's O it's OG. Anyways, Let's go up this way now. We're going from this A to this A, and then maybe we'll do the pentatonic shapes rather than the full shapes in here. So let's go this way. Actually, let's think about the pentatonic because that's a little different, and I might get tired before we get to it if I don't do it. So the pentatonic now is five out of the seven shapes right so if i said so what are the shapes of the pentatonic because we're going to basically be removing uh two shapes for the pentatonic so what we have then is we have this shape which i would call the hamburger so i'm calling that the hamburger because a lot of computer when you see that it's like kind of a computer thing where you have these three things and that's why I keep on calling this the meat of the hamburger, because that's the one shape that's kind of the same when you compare the the seven note shape to the five note shape uh, and everything else. You kind of have to reiterate a little bit. And that's because when we think about the shapes, this hamburger kind of lies in between what we had before, which was the double stop box. So we kind of group these two together because it makes sense to do when we're looking at the shapes of seven but then when we're looking at the only five shapes there's no real great way to do it that i can see right you get you have what you have here is breaking out this shape which has these two nice little lines next to it which looks kind of like a computer hamburger thing and then and then this is what i'm calling the bars so i'm calling the bars and the hamburger the bars covering two strings and and basically we start at the bottom of the bar shape. So right, we're on the bottom left of the bar, which is here, which you which you could see clearly because this top is the same as the bottom. So I'm, I'm starting at the top, at the bottom left of the bar shape when I do the five note pentatonic. So we go boom, and then I'm only going to the end of the bars. I'm not playing the notes in the middle if it's at the end of the bars. So I go from here to here at the barbells, doot doot. And then I go into what I call this shape, which is I'm calling the hamburger, which is going to go boom, boom, and then boom, boom. And that takes me home. That's why the, the home base for my minor is at the left bottom of the bar, which you can see down here more clearly. And then the right of the, ham the meat middle part of the hamburger when I'm looking at uh, the pentatonic shape. So that's going to be the general idea there. So if I was to play that out, we, we can also mess with the counting of it because I can count it out to five notes because I go one, two, three, four, five, and then six is back home. Uh, but then I would also want to think about it like uh, in terms of maybe how it fits into the major scale so I can use the same kind of numbering system that we have uh, over here. So what? So what's it doing? It's going from the one and it's skipping the two going to the three. So we're going one, three, and then it goes to the four, four, five, six, uh, seven. Wait, wait a second, I skipped one. <laughs> one, skipping the two to the three, and then four, five, and then it's skipping this six, and then seven, and back to eight. So one, skipping the two to three, and then four, five, skipping the six, seven, eight. One, skipping the two to three, one, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, three, four, five, 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 seven, eight. Right. So that 
so you could try to if you if you label it like that way then you're using a numbering system that's hard to do because it's easier to go you know one two one two three four five six right and just say it's out of six which is perfectly fine to do but you won't have the same numbering system that ties into your seven note scale so why does the pentatonic work so well uh in my thinking it's removing these it's removing the half steps so you're you're less likely to have a tensiony kind of too much tensiony kind of thing and then you can always go back in and add the half steps so that so the pentatonic seems a little bit safer there possibly easier to move uh from mode to mode because it and then and then you add in possibly the tension with the half steps in a more systematic way that's one way that maybe you think about putting your improvisation together so we have if i go from one skipping the two to the three uh what's the interval there well it's going to be a three note interval right so now we, this is the only we have a three note interval here we're never going to go more than in this shape these pentatonic shapes we never go more than four to five frets and we're never going to have on the pentatonic shape two notes right next to each other and then so i'm going to go here one two three and then i go half step to here and then whole step and then we we're skipping this one so that means we have once again a three note jump to get to here and then a whole step back uh home so no half steps involved in our pentatonic uh if we look at the pentatonic go from here and say we're going to go from one to three obviously the pentatonic minor pentatonic has a if i'm looking at this three here let's do it this way and oh i should make another box this is getting messy let's make this one like green can i right click on it oh i can't see my shapes up here Oh, here it is. Outline it as green. Okay. So now we have, so the one to the three, so it's got a perfect first. It's got the minor third in it. So again, you would call that the two if you think about it as six, five notes, but I'm gonna say it's the it goes from the one to the three to match it to the seven note scale so I can still use my same numbering system and call that a three note away minor third and then it's got the fourth in it so then we go to the fourth which is going to be a uh, a five note away perfect fourth and then we've got the fifth in it which is a five note away perfect fifth and then it doesn't have the sixth and it moves up to the seven which is a 10 note away minor seven and then basically back to the octave so those are the minor shapes and so the qu so the thing that's confusing is to try to see this thing in terms of what i would call bars and hamburgers and then be able to add the notes that you need to be adding in in order to also see it in terms of the full shape which i would think of breaking it down into either you could see you could see the whole thing as like this is my this is my minor scale shape from top to bottom but when you do that and then i can see so i can do that in terms of you know this is my minor and then i can do that and say then i can see my major and see how they fit into each other but if you do that looking at it from top to bottom especially if we're using the full shape then what you tend to do what i always ended up doing is saying i can't see the shape unless i play it from top to bottom right and that's not so what if you break it out into smaller components and that's why i'm trying to break it out into double stops and squares and then there's bars and hamburgers then you can see the smaller pieces and not have to go to the top of the shape to recreate it 
Unfortunately, though, it's kind of hard to, you would think these things would overlap on each other more neatly. And what I'm, from what I've seen, I haven't seen anybody put these smaller building blocks together, you know, in a way that fits together better than this. This is the best way I've seen to kind of see it. So that means that we have to tie out, this is the bottom of the bar, the bottom uh, left of the bar, which is also the top of the double stop square if I thought about like all seven notes versus the pentatonic. All right, enough of that. Let's go back to uh, this one. And so what was I on? I was on, well, let's go down this way then. And back to the full seven notes from this side. So now I'm gonna go from this A here. So back to the second. And so this is going to be the second. And so I'm going to call this a uh, the second of the minor scales a two note away major second. Two note away major second. The inverse of that is 12 minus two or 10 note away uh, minor seven. So if I go from the A to the B, Two note away major second if I went from the B to the A, 10 note away minor seven. And then if I go to the next one, and we also know that the two, the second of a minor scale is the Aeolian six minus one, five plus two, seven. That would be the Locrian. And you can see it's right behind on the, this is the house that got shifted by the earthquake. It's right behind this is the one that's like in the attic. It's the weird one that is like up in the attic on on that area. So then we're going to go to the to the third of the minor scale, which is going to be this one. And we're going to say this is uh, a for the minor scale. It's going to be a three note away minor third and three note away minor third. The inverse would be 12 minus three, which would be nine. So the inverse would be a nine note away, which would be a major six. So if I went from A to C, that's a three note away minor third from C to A, nine note away major six. We know that the, th I can count that by the way, by saying this is five, four, three. And we can also say that the third of the mode number six Aeolian or minor scale is six minus one or five plus three is uh, five, six, seven, eight. There's only seven modes, therefore eight minus seven is one. One is Ionian, otherwise known as the major scale, major mode, Ionian, and that's C. And the C is in the penthouse because it's the major scale looking towards the ocean uh, up here in our house. Okay, so then we're gonna go to the next one, which is gonna be the fourth. And so we're going to say, all right, this is the fourth. And that's going to be then the fourth of the minor mode is a five note away perfect fourth. And I could see that because it's five notes away to the strings are five notes. And 12 minus five is seven. Therefore, the inverse is a seven note away perfect fifth. If I go from the A to the D, five note away perfect fourth. If I went from D to A, seven note away perfect fifth. The fourth of the Dorian is, uh, I'm sorry, the fourth of the mode number six Aeolian minor scale is six minus one is five plus four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There's only seven modes, ten minus seven, therefore uh, it would be three. What happened, K Paso? We have six minus one is uh, five plus four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 9 minus 7 is 2. That's the Dorian mode, which is a minor mode. And you can see the minor mode is not in the box. Here's the box. But the minor mode's hanging out over here in the double stop area <clears throat> doing its own thing. It's not in the major house, the major house box. All right. And so then we're going to go then to the next one, which is going to be the Phrygian. So if I go from this A uh, to this E, then we're going to call that the Phrygian, and it's the fifth 
uh, it's a seven little way perfect fifth. Seven little way perfect fifth. And how do I know that? Because I can count down five and then up this way, 10, nine, eight, seven. Inverse of that 12 minus seven would be a uh, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, it would be a five little way perfect fourth. So if I go from A to E, seven note away perfect fifth. From E to A, five note away uh, perfect fourth. We know that the fifth of mode number six Aeolian is six minus one or five plus five, which would be 10. 10 minus seven modes would be three. And that's gonna be mode number three, which is Phrygian. Phrygian being a minor mode. And you can see that the Phrygian is not in the front of the house. Here's the box. It's shifted because of the earthquake and it's in, it's kind of in the basement. It's in the back, uh, looking not towards the beach up here, but towards the, towards the back, back. So that's where the Phrygian, and it has, of course, that distinctive minor uh, second. So then we're gonna go then this way and we're gonna say now we're on the sixth the sixth of the minor scale is an eight note away, minor six, counting that up, five, 10, nine, eight. So there's the eight notes away, 12, the, the inverse 12 minus eight would be four. So the inverse would be a four note away, major third. Therefore, if I count from, if I play from A to F, eight note away minor six. If I go from uh, F to A, four note away major third. We know that the sixth of mode number six, Aeolian or minor scale is six minus one, five plus six, 11 minus seven modes, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, that would be four, <laughs> which is the Lydian mode. And the Lydian mode is a major mode indicated by the uppercase number here. And you can see it's at the front of C's house, the major scales house looking towards the ocean because it's a major mode in our story. All right, then we're gonna go to the seven. So the seven here going from this A to this G is going to be, of course, the seventh of a minor scale is a seven note away. Uh, I mean, is a ten, 10 note away minor seven. 10 note away minor seven. I can count that by saying this is five. Kink in the tuning means this distance is 10, another five or 10. <clears throat> and, that, and the inverse of, of that would be 12 minus 10 or two. Therefore, that would be a two note away major second. So if I go from A to G, 10 note away minor seven from G to A, two note away major uh, second. We also know that the seventh of mode number six, Aeolian or minor scale is six minus one or five plus seven, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 12 minus, uh, 12 minus seven modes uh, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 is five, right? <laughs> which is the mixolydian. And mixolydian is a major mode indicated by the capital here, but it's the cool bluesy one because it has a flat seven on it. And so that's the one that doesn't live. It's the major scale that doesn't live in the C major penthouse, but rather has its own flat over here where it's hanging with the Dorian uh, on, on the two note per string, which has been shifted up because of the earthquake. Okay, so anyway, next one. What am I doing here? We've got, <clears throat> all right, on the picking side of things, I was working on reaching kind of beyond the like these shapes and seeing if I can practice my reach, which is why I've been, another reason I've been trying to hold my guitar this way, so because I, I feel like I can reach further uh, with the guitar this way. So I've been like, trying to just practice putting my finger on any particular note. I've been practicing the note in, in the key of A minor because that's what I've been normally practiced with, like right here, for example, and then reaching beyond the normal reach, which would be here, and going to the next note, which would be here. So I've been kind of messing with that. So I'm kind of looking at this line 
And then saying, okay, what if I reached up there? Can I reach it? Kind of. I can almost do a double stop at the top of the guitar. And then I've been going... And then in this particular shape, I also like like hitting that C up there because that's like the third. And then you've got the open string here. So if I play this in an open A like this, you get a heavy E. So you get like the third. And then I mute, when I, when I lift my finger up, I usually mute this so I don't play the heavy E. So it's all like that heavy A sound. I think that's similar up there to doing it back here where like I put my finger on this this E and then I play like this C and then take my finger off back here and then I mute the I mute the E string with my thumb so I could do that similar thing like up here because now I'm going, instead of going from like an open A to the third C and back, up here I'm going, I'm holding down the A, uh, but I'm going to the C up top, so it's not exactly the same, and then two open A's. got my fifth which is the fifth is uh, just down here so I can kind of play with that so I've been putting my I've been reaching up here going back to here to do 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 and then reaching from here to here do, 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 and then going and then going back to this boom boom this one so I've been kind of messing with that as my trying to work trying to get the a pattern that sounds good doing that. same thing I can kind of mirror that down here because we have the same shape and then when I'm on the D I can do the same thing and reach up to this F and then I have the open D here so I can kind of do the same thing here I'd like to mute both of these strings so that I just play the open D though which is a little difficult to do with my thumb So if I played the difference here is that when I when I reach up to this one, it's it, it's a little it's this string, uh, and then I have and then I can reach up this way, and then go back to my little shuffle pattern. So it's a little bit different, but and then I reach up to this F. So then I'm real, so I can go like. up to the A.
So I've been playing, I've also been practicing trying to put my finger on any particular note and then reaching around it, which I normally do with my pointer. But then I've been thinking, what if I put like this finger here or even like my ring finger here, or let's put it on the A again. So if I put my ring finger on this A and say, what can I play around that? I can clearly reach to this D and this A pretty clearly. And then I could I can play around to here, which is kind of interesting. So I could do something like if I try to just lock that finger down, what can I do? What could I reach within this shape? Is kind of and I and the reason I can I can hit this one too is because that's like the flat. That's like the bluesy note. So I can hit that one and. reaching up to the A. So now I'm just reaching back to this one. And I'm just trying to lock in that ring finger. And so now I'm putting another finger down on that F. Just to see what it sounds like. barring off this whole thing. Now I'm reaching up to this G. I'm not really worried about, I can analyze what kind of chord that is, but I'm not really caring right now. That sound like. with it in other places here so like what if I put my cur my finger on this B which is kind of unusual it's gonna start to sound like I'm not in the key of A anymore maybe but I'll go but I have like this open A that I can go back to but that's okay I'll be playing in like another mode if I stay in this shape and then this is kind of what can I reach in here <laughs> whole bar been practicing just seeing if I can play in my my normal kind of position I like to start over here and do that C to and just see if I can 
go alternate. going from C to from from open A to C and then open E and then to C to the F and then to the G and then I'm just alternating back to see if I can get some speed with something like that. There's a bunch of combinations I can start to do and say, well, what if I started up top and did a similar thing where now I'm holding these two down. same thing down here if I'm holding these two down or this one if I'm holding this one down uh, I'd have to be uh, what am I doing here